Hello Crosshaw and welcome back to yet another edition of Physics at Home. As usual, here are your starters for 10, some revision and retrieval practice. Number one, what is the equation for weight? You can give me the answer either as a word equation or using the correct symbols from the AQA specification. Number two, what is the unit of gravitational field strength? Number three is a picture of a speed time graph or a velocity time graph. What does the area under the graph tell you? And finally, question four, a distance time and a velocity time graph with identical gradients. Do they show the same thing? If not, what's the difference? Pause the video, have a go and resume when you're ready. So grab your green pens, let's check together. Question number one, the weight equation is mass times gravitational field strength or as formula, small w equals small m times small g. So w equals mg. The unit of gravitational field strength is the Newton per kilogram. The area under a speed time graph tells you distance traveled and no, these graphs do not show the same thing. First, the gradient of a distance time graph tells you speed. The gradient of a velocity time graph tells you the acceleration, A. I promise that is an A, I just can't draw with a mouse. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the first of Newton's laws. We will state it, Describe the forces on an object and use this information to explain the motion of a moving or stationary object. So what is Newton's first law of motion? Well, this rolling bowling ball illustrates a good example. It's moving with a constant speed, just trundling across a frictionless floor. But before we get there, let's consider the idea of balance and unbalanced forces. If we consider a camel standing on a road, what forces act upon it? Well, its weight is pulling down towards the centre of the earth, and there is a normal contact force or reaction force from the solid ground. Both these forces are balanced. The camel is not moving up or down. However, what would happen if the floor was suddenly to vanish? If a sinkhole opened up in the ground? Well, of course, our poor camel would fall. The camel is being acted on by an unbalanced force. This causes an acceleration. And this idea of unbalanced forces causing an acceleration is one way to express Newton's first law of motion. The law can be summarized in a slightly different fashion as shown here. Objects at rest stay at rest. Objects in motion remain in motion with a constant velocity, that is to say, in the same direction, at the same speed, unless they are acted on by an external force. So a push or a pull that can change the speed, change the velocity. Applying that rule, what are the possible scenarios? What can happen in each one? Well, if there's a resultant force, it that is, it will accelerate. An acceleration will mean a change in speed, possibly a change in direction too. And if there's no resultant force, it stays still. If it is moving, it stays at a constant speed, constant velocity. Here are four cars. Let's assume it's all telling the same story 
and the first car is starting from rest. Each picture follows in the sequence. Pause the video, describe what will happen in each case and why it happens. When you're ready to proceed, resume the video. Okay, so what did you guess? Well, the first one, we have an unbalanced force and the car is going to accelerate to the right. With the second car, there is now some air resistance acting as it moves. That car experiences a greater force to the right, so it's still going to accelerate, but the value of that acceleration will be less than the first car. In scenario three, we have now an equal and opposite force pushing backwards, or pulling backwards. So we have balanced forces, and in this situation, the car would move at a constant velocity forwards. If the engine was to then suddenly conk out, i.e. quit, then as the car is still moving, it will still experience uh, air resistance and friction towards the rear, and the car will begin to slow down. On a side note, as it does slow down, the value of those resistive forces will decrease because they are related to the speed of the car. We'll come back to that in another lesson. Here are some uh, random North American animals and fox. Uh, and you can fill in the words stationary, faster, slower, or constant speed to complete each sentence following Newton's law. Summarizing again, can you complete the sentence? Pause the video, have a go, proceed when ready. We can lay out this information in the form of a flowchart. Okay, so the initial condition will either be at rest, a stopped, or moving. And in each scenario, in each condition, what would happen if there are balanced forces, i.e., there is no resultant force? And what would happen if there are unbalanced forces? So go back to the sentences you've looked at and written. Can you derive a flowchart which covers each of those scenarios? And finally, can you apply your knowledge by completing the apply to demonstrate exam questions as shown on this slide? Thank you for your attention, year 10 or 11 and best of luck. And finally, here is the mark scheme for that apply to demonstrate question. Don't forget Seneca, Century and other learning channels to support your homework and learning. Catch you next time.